Today, we're talking about Klein's thermal imaging camera. I bought this myself. It retails for about $250. And for $250, I couldn't go wrong. I had to buy it because I like buying little gadgets. I like buying toys. I'm kind of like a tool addict. I've been wanting to get a thermal imaging camera and they are overpriced. This is only about 250 bucks. So when I saw that, uh, I bought this at Klein, the Klein Day sale and I got, actually got 20% off of that. So I didn't even pay 250 bucks for it. I really had to jump on it then. This is their thermal imaging camera. It comes in this little bag, this little black bag and you open it up, it's just this little thing. Comes with the uh, USB cable to charge it. it, has an internal battery. So you don't have to worry about replacing batteries and you got your instruction booklet and everything like that. Just look at how small it is, it's just so tiny. On this, we have a power button and then we have a button on top that uh, can take pictures. So you can take pictures with this. So that's pretty cool. Uh, on the bottom, you have where you're charging, where you can charge for your USB or you can transfer the data off of this to your computer and upload your files that way. And then on the other side, you have a spot for a micro USD. This micro USD, you can put it in and you can basically just put it in and you can go around taking pictures with the thermal imaging camera. Now the thermal imaging sensor is on the back of this. I would say this is kind of a sensitive area, so I wouldn't really, if you drop it, try not to drop it or scuff up this area. But it is kind of impact resistant. It does have some nice rubber grips. Like it's really grippy on this. So you can, it fits very comfortable in your hand. So it doesn't even feel like that, you know, you're gonna drop it because it has kind of like an anti-slip rubber coating, it seems. And then there is a tether on the side that where you can uh, use a little strap if you want to put it around your wrist or anything like that. One thing I would have liked to see is a spot for a thread. So if you want to put it on a tripod, was it a quarter 20 or something like that? I can't remember what it is. I haven't even taken the little plastic protector off because I, I like to keep it on there as long as I can because I don't want to get the screen all scratched up. Power it on, turn it on, hold down the button. It will load. It does take a few seconds for it to load. If you can see, we have on here, on the screen, like I said, uh, it will take the temperature reading of this spot, whatever you point it to, that's what the temperature reading is. So. The temperatures range from about 75 to 57 uh, degrees in this room. Up here is your battery life, which it lasts pretty pretty long. I was really surprised. It'll last a, a couple hours. And whatever your center point is on, that is the temperature that it is reading. So if we point it up at a light, it's saying that the light is about 65 to almost 70 degrees. And that's about right because those lights up there are up there are LED. So that's right about the range that we have. So on this is we got some kind of like little cool features. So we could take a picture of this if we wanted to as a reference. And then we can save it. Uh, we could either hit the X, we can hit the arrow on the left side to not save it or hit the arrow on the right side to save it. And then we can go into the menu screen. Now, a lot of people have been asking, will this do radiant floor? And let me get out of the menu real quick. Oh, we got to hold it to go back. Uh, duh. <laughs> okay. If I look down, you can see my concrete floor that is radiant. It's not really on right now. I will 
show you a picture on here of my radiant floor at my house. Here's a picture of my radiant floor at my house that I took down the hallway and on the left side, the radiant floor is off or it is not, it's not on because it's on a different thermostat and the radiant on the left or the right is on and is pushing fluid through it because that's what the thermostat is calling for in that area. So it kicked on and you'll see that it's, you know, it's redder. You know, you can pretty much find if uh, you have any breaks in your radiant floor, I think. You know, you can kind of see where your cold spots are and your hot spots. Okay, so we're gonna open up the menu. Hit the menu button. You can scroll right to left. So we'll go all the way to the, whoop, we'll go all the way to the temperature spot. We'll hit it once. So you can change this from Celsius to Fahrenheit. I'm gonna change, I have it to Fahrenheit because we live in the States and we don't like to be like the rest of everybody, right? <laughs> So we'll go over to the next spot. This is to where you can have your arrow key or here we can turn all this off. See, see how the center, we turned off the, the arrow and then we can also turn on or off where you see that little, that little box moving around. It's all, it's trying to find different, uh, it's like kind of, I think it's calibrating or it's finding other hot spots in the area so we can turn that on i like to leave that on because it, it's kind of always moving around checking everything out making sure it's all good all right so we got to hold this to go back out of that menu now we can go over and if we hit this once we can change the settings to the temperatures you can go black and white you can have like grayscale to kind of see what your hot areas are I like to have, this just for me kind of seems too blown out. It almost seems like the garage door is on fire, but I like to have it kind of like this because this kind of, you can really see where your colder areas are, like the blues around, you know, everything. But, okay, I digress. We'll hold this down. Whoop. There we go. We can, with that, we can actually look through the pictures and we can go through different pictures that I took. There's my radiant floor that I was talking about in my house that I just showed you. And then it all also, I, I forgot to tell you this, that when you click on the picture, it gives you all this information. It'll tell you the date and time. It'll tell you um, the temperatures, the center, the asmicity or whatever. That's kind of, uh, Oh, I'm trying to think of what that uh, esmicity it is. How well the unit is representing the heat or the 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 image that is given off into the room. I'm totally gonna butcher that, but let me know down in the comments if I'm wrong about that. Okay, so we can go into settings, and we can do a bunch of stuff in settings. So we got in the setup, we got the time or not the time. We got the temperature bar click on that you can turn that on or off and that'll get rid of the little bar on the side there and I like to have it on so to exit out of this to go back whoop we hit hold the button down for a second now the date and time I haven't set it yet so I probably do need to set that but for time's sake we will go back now this is the emissivity. I'm horrible at pronunciation. You should know that if you're a subscriber on this channel, I have a hard enough time talking as it is, and then they give me big words. <laughs> but anyways, you can adjust this. I have it at the factory setting. Power on, auto power off, you can hit that. You can change it from five minutes, 10 minutes to 30 minutes. I have mine on, on 30 minutes, which actually I want it down to five minutes auto off if I don't use it. And then you can adjust the brightness. I have it on medium. And then high, low alert. High, low alert, if I stay in it because I'm holding it down, 
High low alert is kind of, is really nice because it'll go to the highest temperature. And once it gets past this temperature that you set, it'll give you a sound alert. I have it set to the factory. I think uh, 752 is the highest that it'll go anyways. And then you can also have your low. So anything under 14 degrees Fahrenheit, it'll give me a little bit of an alert and let me know what it does. I want to get this to, let's say 70 degrees. And it'll, I want to see it give me a, an alert. Notice I have it pointed at the garage door and the alarm is point flashing at me saying it's hot, it's hot, it's hot. Okay, that's pretty cool that you can adjust that. I'm gonna take that off because that's kind of annoying, but I understand what it's doing. <laughs> okay, let's adjust that. I'm gonna take it all the way back up. I'll go to 200, 201, because that's what I like it. Okay. Anyways, so that's pretty much the basis of what this whole thing, this thermal imaging does. I thought it's really cool. Thermal imaging is kind of new to me. Uh, it's a fun tool to figure out and you can do a lot of things with it. You can, you know, figure out where your cold spots are coming in, in your house. You can see uh, how well you have insulation in the ceiling. Look at that. Uh, got pretty well good insulation in the ceilings um, not really getting too much heat loss up there and you can really find around your your door see look at that garage door I'm losing a ton of heat it seems like off of that garage door uh, and it's going outside right now the temperature outside is 20 degrees I am losing a lot of heat out of that garage door. If you like this video, hit the like button. Uh, comment down below if you have any questions about this. This is pretty new to me, but I will try to answer all these to the best of my ability, or I will find the answer for you. Uh, I'm Philip Bridges, and I will see you on the next one.